algebra number 2.7b, we're talking about using the distributive property. And now we're going to talk about using it in reverse for factoring. You saw in the last video we had the mother bird distributing food to her babies in the parentheses nest. And we know now that that's the distributive property of multiplication over addition because the number on the outside of the parentheses distributes to each number on the inside of the parentheses. And we keep that plus sign. That's the addition. We also did it over subtraction where there was a minus sign in between here. Well, if we use the distributive property in reverse, we're factoring. If we have 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5, we can see that 2 is a factor for both of them. We put 2 on the outside of the parentheses and put the 3 plus 5 on the inside. That's factoring. We look for like factors, the 2. We put the one out, we put it, that one factor outside the parentheses, like that. And we put the other factors inside the parentheses with the appropriate sign. So if we have 5a minus 5b plus 5c, it'll become 5 with a minus b plus c inside the parentheses. Do you remember from the previous videos, there's an invisible 1 in front of all of these variables? Now, if you don't know about it, there's a link in this description about my video on the invisible 1. But in front of all these variables, there's an invisible 1. We don't write it because we can see there's 1a. So we don't have to write the 1 in front of the a, the coefficient. So by writing it with the 5 on the outside, because they all have a 5, we have the 5 out here, and we can multiply it to the a minus the b plus the c, and that gets us the 5a minus 5b plus 5c. See? All right. So let's try this one. We've got xy plus xz, and we need to write it so that it's factored. So we can see there's an x here, and there's an x here, isn't there? So we can use these two x's and put one on the outside of the parentheses. Now what's left over is this y plus this z. And we put the y plus z inside the parentheses and now we've factored it. See? Let's try this one. We've got ab minus ac plus ad. We can see that there's an a, an a, and an a. So that's what we put outside the parentheses. And what's left is a b and a c and a d. And we put the plus and minus signs like they're supposed to be. We just drop them down, see? And we've got A on the outside with B minus C plus D. See how we did that? We just pulled it out of there. All right, let's try it with a fraction and some variables. We've got a half X plus 3 halves Y minus a half. So what number is a factor of all three of these coefficients and numbers? A half can go into 3 halves and it can go into a half. A half We've got our x here, so we put the x here and the half on the outside. Half times x is half x. Half plus 3y is going to get us the 3 halves, because 3 times a half is 3 halves, see? And a half times a negative 1 is going to get us this negative half, see? Half times negative 1 is a negative half, and it got us right back up to here, see? So we know we did it correctly. We check by doing the distributive property. A half times x is half x plus that half times 3. If we put it over a 1, we get 3 over 2, y, see, just like up there, and we get our minus half, see? Now, don't let factoring drive you crazy. There's a couple different ways to do this, and a lot of people get confused with this. So this is the most important part of this video, okay? If we've got negative 3x plus a 6y minus a 9z, we think to ourselves, what can negative 3 be multiplied by to get this positive 6? What do you multiply a negative by to get a positive? Another negative. So if we multiply this negative 3 and put it on the outside of the parentheses and multiply it by a negative 2, that's going to get us that positive 6. See? So we really don't need this here, okay? Negative 3 times the negative 2y is going to get us this plus 6y right here. See? And what can negative 3 be multiplied by to get this negative, whoops, it's supposed to be a negative 9, to get a negative 9. What can we multiply a negative 3 by to get a negative 9? Negative times what makes a negative? A um, we need to multiply it by a positive, don't we? Because a negative times a positive 
is going to get us back to this negative 9. Remember, negative times a negative equals a positive. A negative times a positive is going to get us a negative. So because we're trying to multiply this negative 3 to get to a negative 9, we're going to have to multiply it by a factor that's a positive to get back to that negative, see? I know it's confusing, so we're going to multiply it by a positive 3. So here's what happens. We've got negative 3 times x. So this one right here, I rewrote it down here so we don't have to stretch the camera, okay? So this is what we're trying to get to. So negative 3 times x gets us the negative 3x. Negative 3 times a negative 2y, two negatives make a positive. That's the positive 6y. And negative 3 times a positive 3z is going to get us back to the negative 9z, see? because a positive and negative makes a negative, all right? We use the distributive property to rewrite it to see if we did it cor our factoring correctly. Now, here's the confusing part. We can swap these signs. We can make that a positive and that a negative. How? Because we take the sign away from the front of the 3 here. See, when we did it here, we had a negative sign in front of the 3, just like up here, see? Just like our original. So what we can do is take that negative sign away and just put a 3 there. Now we can make the internal ones inside the parentheses make it turn out to be a negative. See? If we just have a plain old 3 and we multiply it to a negative x, now we will get the negative 3x, won't we? Because we're multiplying a positive and a negative, so we got our negative 3x. And if we have a positive 3 and we multiply it to a positive 2y, we're going to get that positive 6y, aren't we? And if we have a positive 3 and we multiply it to a negative 3z, we'll get our negative 9z. See? We were able to swap these operation signs. See? Here it's a minus first and then a plus. Here it's a plus and then a minus because we took that minus sign away from the front of that 3. See? It's not there. See? All right. Let's try it again for those that are really confused. We've got negative 2y plus 8z minus 2. So we think, what can be multiplied to this negative 2 so that we can get a positive 8? Negative times a negative makes a positive. So to get to the 8, 2 times 4 is 8, so it's going to have to be a negative 2 times a negative 4 to make that positive 8z. So we've got negative 2 outside the parentheses, because see 2 is a factor of all of these. So we've got negative 2 on the outside of the parentheses times y. That gets us our negative 2y. And negative 2 times a negative 4z gets us a positive 8z. See that? So now we think, what can be multiplied to negative 2 to get a negative 2? We're at a negative, and we want a negative. Well, if we want a negative, we've got to multiply it to a positive, don't we? So we've got to multiply it to a positive 1. So now, this is what we had before. The ending of it is a plus 1. Negative 2 times y gets us negative 2y. Negative 2 times a negative 4z gets us a positive 8z. Negative 2 times a positive 1 gets us negative 2. All right? And we can also swap the operation signs and remove the negative sign from in front of this 2. In he over here, we had the negative sign in front of the 2. Now, there's no sign in front of that 2. It's just a positive 2. And when we multiply a positive 2 times a negative y, that is going to get us our negative 2y. When we multiply a positive 2 times a positive 4z, that's going to get us our positive 8z. And when we multiply a positive 2 times a negative 1, that's going to get us our negative 2. So do you see how we swapped the signs here? This is a plus and then a minus. This is a minus and then a plus because we took that sign away from the front. See? So it's, it won't drive you crazy if you understand that concept of having the minus sign in front of that first factor or taking it away, okay? So that is the craziness of factoring, and I hope you totally understand now, all right? We're going to move on to 2.7c, and we're going to talk about collecting like terms again, and we're going to go more in depth, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.